You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Worldwide Podcast. Internet Radio. You are listening to Positive Power 21.org with Jerry Royce. This is Brandon Royce, and you're listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Positive Power 21.org. Oh my God, it's coming this way. Well, what is it? What is it? What is it? I don't know, but it's like really, really big. Really big? Really big. Could it be? Could it be? I think it is. Oh, I like him. Like so crazy. I think it's worldwide. Worldwide? Worldwide? I think it's worldwide. The Batman? See, it's not Kikina. And it's Jerry Ross. Jerry Ross. Worldwide. Oh my God. To the Batmobile. Let's go. Whenever citizens are feeling down, and Atomic maybe you got real indie artist got some music. Roger, you know Jerry's Roger. always gonna be there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Arthur Rowland from Arthur Rowland and Christian and Friends from Atlanta, Georgia. And you listen to the ultimate superhero, Jerry Ross. Worldwide live. The Batman. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. The Bible's full of great verses and passages about the topic of love. God's love for us is a perfect example and starting place to study on love. 
There are also great verses about love and relationship to marriage, brotherly love, or friendship, and loving your neighbor. Here is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. I call this unselfish love. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice or wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, adore all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. God loves his scriptures. There should be no talk of love in the Bible without covering God's love of each other. This is the love that led us to a path of eternal life. Praise God. Thank you. I'm Jerry Woods Live. I'm worldwide. Facebook Live, Spreaker Radio Live, iTunes. What's going on, people? Hope you had a great Monday. Because I know Mondays can be rough. This is all good, though. You made it through it, y'all. God is good. Thank you everybody for joining us and welcome to Positive Power 21.org Christian Media. And you're listening to Late Night with Jerry Woods Live and my co-star from Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio, where it's freezing cold with snow and ice. Latrice Pro Savvy Jackson, and we call her Miss Jackson. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power, 21? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm your host, Jerry Lewis Live, worldwide in Philippians 447 reads. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I said again, rejoice and let everyone see that you are unselfish and considering all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank Him for His answers. If you do this, you do this. You hear me, saints? You will experience God's peace, which is far, far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. God's peace. Woo! Hallelujah. It's praise and worship time. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The one who comes to me comes to the Father through me. I read that wrong. Let me try it again. John 14, 6, New International Version. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Bam! John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet and sound, flute and harp. Tambourine and dance, strings and pipes, cymbals and loud flashing cymbals. It's praise and worship time right here on Positive Power 21.org. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray for my friends, my family, my neighbors, and my co-workers. I ask you to bring healing to my friend's body. I ask you to correct what needs correcting, heal that which needs healing, touch what needs divine touch. God, I ask you to give my friends a new season of vibrant health, energy, and enthusiasm. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. 
All right, y'all. Hope you had a super great Monday. I know Mondays could be tough. Woo, man. I don't know what to say about my Monday. But anyway, we're back. We're back. I hope Miss Savvy could make it because I know she wasn't feeling too well. I didn't hear from her today. I did send her a text message to see if she replied back. been on the top of my list. All right. She's okay. Anyway, the show must go on. But we got some new music for you. So uh, you gonna, we're going to hit some three in a row. And we're going to have a good time tonight. That's right. You tune in, y'all. Tune in 10 o'clock every night right here on Facebook Live, Spreaker Radio. And you can, you can pull us up on your podcast app. Just look for us on iTunes, Jerry Boys Live. All right, y'all. We're ready to throw down on some music. Right now, you're listening to Charles Fears. So, all right. All right. All right, we're ready to hear one from Shanta Moore called Favorite. Ready to throw down on that one. We're going to be getting her on the show pretty soon. We're going to try to get Tia and Dana and Mark Prentice. Right, made for Christ. That's right. We got some big lineup of artists coming our way. All right, and we're gonna try to get Janice Levon back. You know, she got that big song out called "The Wonder, The Wonder of You." I think it's called. That's right, y'all. We're gonna have a great 2017. So tune in right here. If you're an artist and you're looking for some radio exposure, man, we got some podcasters on this network. We have a good time. You got to join us right here. So join that VIP club. We got the exclusive, exclusive VIP club. That's right, the Rocket Club. You trying to get your music in rotation. You want, you want producers to hear you. You want record executives and record labels and, you know, people making moves, event coordinators. That's right, you got to come right here, y'all. We making it happen, building partnerships. Big partnerships. God is good. He's making it happen. He's connecting us. That's right. Through this good thing called Facebook, Twitter, Google, Pinterest, Periscope. That's right. Whatever your heart desire. And don't forget, y'all, if you listen to me on Speaker Radio, come on over to Jerry Bush Live. You can see us in our in our studio, podcasting live right here. All right. And don't forget, y'all. 17, we got support up. Oops, slipped out my hand. Man, I was lifting a lot of weights today. <laughs> I'm tired. We got to support these authors. This guy's an award winning poet. Arthur Burgum, his book is called Through Ones Through Greatness. Right? Great book. Testimony of Ones Through Greatness, my bad. And you can find him on Amazon. All right? Don't forget this guy right here. I love this book. Take Charge of Your Life, Dr. Terrell Jenkins. They got a new book out, too. I keep forgetting to order that book. I haven't really had a lot of time to be doing no reading, but I will support you. Church by Teresa B. Howe. Good book. Right? That church. And I didn't get my book DNR yet. My wife hasn't ordered it yet. I guess I better do it. But this lady got this book out, Tina A. Hobson. Oh, how loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Reflections of God's love. That's right, for me and you. Check it out. It's a good book. I got through some of it. And this lady making things happen. Corona Jacobs. You can hear her right here. That's right, her audio. She's going to be my guest tonight, too. Hope I remember to send her the, the link. But she be on tonight. I think we got on at 10.30. She's probably taking a nap so she'd be ready. So it'll be me and Verona, and I don't think Patrice is going to be joining us tonight. Yeah, I didn't see her dial in yet, and I haven't heard from her. But we will have Verona on the show tonight. And, you know, she has a beautiful voice, man. So we're going to just relax and enjoy her. So uh, let me check in on her and see if she, the time she's coming. I think she's coming at 1030. So uh, we're going to play three in a row. So that should take us up in the to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And for those of you that uh, that was following the the um, the NFL, 
Man. Man, there was some upsets. Pittsburgh just destroyed Miami. I thought Miami was going to hang in there a little bit. But there was no competition in the cold weather. That was, that was the element that Pittsburgh liked. Yeah, they, they was bringing it, man. Wow, they was playing like it was summertime. And, um, of course, that's our nemesis. That's right. That's Ravens alter ego. But we'll be back soon, y'all. We still rebuilding, trying to find out who we want to be. Same way, um, congratulations to Green Bay, the, the people out in Wisconsin. Congratulations to you. And uh, I think the Giants lost. Yeah, that's right. The Giants lost to, to uh, Green Bay. And Miami lost to Pittsburgh. I, I, don't, I don't know who played on Saturday. But anyway, y'all, let's get these three in a row. We're going to listen to Shanta Moore, Tia, and some more Shanta Moore. That's right. And then we'll catch it. No, we're going to get Dana. We'll get Dana up there. Let's share the wealth. Three in a row right here on Positive Power 21. Overjoy was live worldwide. And I'm just getting out the gym, y'all. I mean, my daughter, we've been, we, we tore the gym up this weekend. We was in there Friday, Saturday. We passed on Sunday. Had to let the muscles heal up. And we was in there again today doing our thing. It's good to have a workout, buddy. You know, get you in there. No excuses. All right, here we go, y'all. Three in a row. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Can't you see? It's all around you No more room for despair See through the moral clay Oh, God found you At times it seems that there's no way out But thanking you, Jesus For your endless light Oh, oh I'm favored Take a good look at my life Say God is able To turn death into life was over but look at me now I finally realized I finally realized I finally realized oh yes I'm favored Take 
Here we go. Yeah. Crazy yeah. praise, crazy yeah. praise. Yeah. yeah, crazy praise. I got a crazy praise, crazy praise, 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 praise. Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.
You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. All right, man, that was awesome. That was three in a row, y'all. We had Shante Moore, Ted, and Dana. I love me some eye clap, man. I was I was listening to um music for you. Is that what that group called? I know they abbreviated music for Christ. I was on the I was on the um treadmill, and a, I think both of them came on. Let me look at my playlist. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know how I had that happen, but I thought it was... Oh, I know what it was. I think Made for Christ came on, look at my dad, and then it must have hit um, You Gave Us Joy. I was rocking on the treadmill. I was in my zone. That's what it's all about. That's right, get my exercise on, y'all. That's right, me and my daughter doing our thing, my, my, my exercise buddy. That's right, try and get it straight for 2017. That's right, more water. More running, more weights. That's right, y'all. Just do it. No pain, no gain. That's why I told her today. She said, Daddy, my leg's hurting. No pain, no gain. All right, everybody. We, we got Verona in here tonight. And uh, we're going to have an opportunity to, to hear her, her lovely voice. I just love the way she um reads poetry. She's like the best out there ever. All right, here we go. What's up, Ramona? How you doing? I'm Ramona. I mean, Verona. What's going on? How you doing? Oh, I didn't uncheck her. Uh oh, I think stuck. Oh man, Ramona, Verona, can you hear me? Oh, you know what? This thing is not connected for some reason. I don't know what's going on. All right, I'll cut this off. Off. Let me cut it back on. One moment, Verona. Let me get you straight. The system took itself down for some reason. Ah, uh, yeah, it went down. All right, I'm going to bring it back up. It's this uh, a conference center. All right, while well, I get Verona back, let's hit head, let's head, head another one. Matter of fact, this is our music review tonight. And this is a young lady named, Sh- I think it's Shalane, Shalon. I'm going to try that, Shalon. And this piece right here is called Let Me Be. All right, and I, while I work on, oh, here we go. I think she's back. I don't know why I want, okay, Verona, can you hear me now? Hi, Jerry. I can hear you. All right, good. There you go. I don't know. I, I got a delay on my system. I, I I didn't take my system down for a couple of days, and I think it's misbehaving. But it's okay. We got you. Okay. How you doing? I'm good. How are you today? I am fine. I am fine. Um, you know how Mondays are. Just just trying to get through it. <laughs> That's right. But it was good to get off a little earlier today. You know, the weather is, it was just so frigid today. You know, we was down like, in, I think, 12 degrees. And my poor daughter, she has to walk home a couple miles. So um, it's funny. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's weird because she gets off. Her bus lets her off at the school my son goes to. But he gets a ride home from school, a bus. So, But she got to walk. So that's the deal. So anyway... It was cold in, in, in Baltimore, Maryland. So how was it where, where you are? It is very cold here, too, Jerry. <laughs> Everybody getting it. <laughs> hey, but, you know, we're supposed to get 65-degree temperatures on Thursday. What is going on? Yeah, that's same here, too. It's supposed to be up to 70 by Friday. Wow. But right now, I think it's 18 degrees or something like that. That's crazy. Well, that's our weather system. I don't know what's going on. I remember <laughs> I heard President elect Donald Trump say he doesn't believe that the weather system is being controlled. <laughs> Somebody proving them wrong. Something's up. Okay. Something's up. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So what you got good for us today? Everybody miss you. I know. It's been a while. I've missed you guys too. Yeah. I am still um working on uh the audio books all right um yeah collaborating that's right with you which that's is right. awesome i'm excited about that amen amen and look i gotta apologize apologize to you and and uh sophia too and a couple other people we got projects on the table with um christmas usually i you know my wife company shuts down so i kind of you know, it's been like our tradition for the last 20 years. 
we t- usually she takes off two weeks and I take off a week and we just shut down. We don't do anything but just do family stuff. We we have like I think she has like three dinner parties and and um and we do mo- we go to the movies, we watch movies and you know, we just okay. you know, we just get together the family, you know, just, and then my kids are teens That's now good. and they like hanging out with us. And I, you know, I got adult child also and uh, and his brother came okay. in town from the military. So we, you know, we be watching football and movies and my parents were here and in law. So I don't do no work. So that means when, when that week is oh, over, awesome. I got to catch back up and figure out where was I, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so and I know what so you, that's good. yeah, that's right. I mean, we working. So now I know what you, we, I think we owe you one more song and then we should, should have that CD ready to go. That EP that should be ready to fly. Yeah. And then we got to do some, some yeah. paperwork. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but yeah, good, good downtime with yeah. the family. That's, that's important. That's right. Need that downtime, but I always that's devote, right. you know, cause I've been devoting my whole weekends to, you know, doing business. You know, we was shooting concerts and traveling up and down, you know, from New York down to DC and, I don't know. Sometimes you gotta you gotta have some downtime just to catch up and then meditate and see what God is saying to you. You know, that's right. That's right. You gotta hear. Yeah, that's right. All good. We slow restrict. it down just a little bit. That's right. Plus, you know, you, you know, your body's not you know as young as it used to be. You know, sometimes <laughs> right. you gotta figure out what is, what is it saying to you because sometimes it's trying to tell you something. <laughs> you know, it was crazy today. Right. Um, I lost my. Uh, my glucose monitor and um, hmm. but I kind of like you know me and my daughter have been you know hitting the weights and hitting the you know the gym really hard and I said you know my doctor said hey yeah you need to do some weights and you know what's you know when you get a little older in there you kind of you know you kind of lose a little bit of your strength if you don't have a physical job you know you do a desk job right. behind the computer you could tend to get a little weaker you know as you get older That's true. but you don't really know that until it's time for you to lift something heavy <laughs> that you're not used to living. And guess right. when I, guess when I discovered that? <laughs> when? The, the summer. My wife and my daughter and my youngest son, well, he ain't take much clothes, but they had like eight suitcases. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Going to Florida. It's like, are we moving to Florida or are we visiting Florida? <laughs> like, how long are we going to be there? I had all these questions because I had, it was like eight suitcases. Cause I don't pay attention when they're playing a vacation. I just know they're doing their little thing, and, and we're gonna have fun. I'm just, you know, surprise right. me. And I was like, luckily, you know, my vehicle can handle that. But then I said, well, what did you rent? <laughs> she rented a car. I said, what car did you get? <laughs> it must be like a limo or something. She said, no, I got a, a Chrysler 200, honey. That car is trunk is smaller than your car. <laughs> we got there. I said, you need to switch up right now before we waste our time. We ain't getting no eight suitcases in that car. We'd be lucky we could get in there, man. And then she's like, okay, we can get an SUV. And, man, you know, we barely could get the eight suit. Lucky three of the suitcases were, you know, carry-on types, you know. Okay, okay. So that's when I learned my strength because I had to log that stuff. I had to load, unload. And I was like, oh, man, that ain't going right. And then that's when I realized that I lost a lot of strength in my arm, especially my left arm. So, um, you know, okay. guys and gals, you know, you got to do some type of strengthening. You know, this is just all that I yeah. just said was just about we got to do something. I know my buddy said do push-ups. You know, if you can't do anything else, just do push-ups. But I say that's true. That's- lift some dumbbells. Take some hand weights with you when you go walking, you know. You know, keep it moving. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so that's what I'm doing now is working on strengthening. And then once I get my strength together, I'm going to start, you know, building building on the, building on some muscle. Because I lost the weight I wanted. Because everybody caught their cold. How about your household? Did you guys have trouble with that cold? With the cold? Yeah, because it was a cold traveling around. A little virus, a little bug was traveling around for, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, we did for um, for a little bit. My son got it, and then I got it for a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. it was definitely um, traveling around every place. Yeah, that thing, man, it so. got me like the day after Christmas. But a lot of people got caught, what, like New Year's? New Year's. A lot of people got, let's see, New Year's Day. So lucky, yeah. you know, they had a day off. It took like two days to really get yourself together, even though you did have that cold and that, you know, that mucus mm-hmm. built up in you and the chest thing was hurting. Ah, 
Mm, that was awful. But I did. I think I did lose weight because I didn't really eat much for those two days. Just soup, you know, just soup. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So hello to everybody out there on Facebook. Come on on in. Check us out tonight. We got Verona Jacobs, the poet. We actually gonna be helping her publish her books and audio. People have been asking her for a couple of years now, and it's real close. It's real close to happening. We hope we can get support from you guys. And um, hey, we got a lot going on. A lot, a lot of good things happening at uh, Positive Power. And before Verona start, um, you know, reading, we we got another five minutes. We're gonna get. We're gonna let her take over the show. Don't forget, artists out there. We got the VIP exclusive record club going. It's up. It's been launched. You're looking to find a place, a home for your music. I'm talking about 24-7 rotation, almost seven days a week on Spreaker Radio, one of the most powerful platforms out here right now. Very reliable, durable HD audio, and also we stream it in Facebook, too. You know, we do our show on Facebook Live, Spreaker, and also if you got if you got a podcast app on your phone, you can listen to a show on from iTunes. All right, so that's my plug for the day. You saw all the artists that were featured, the authors who who support us all through the year 2016. We give back, so support those authors, okay? All right, Verona, you ready to take over? You ready to do your thing? I am, I am. All right, so how many, how many would you like me to? Um, well, want me to read a couple and then yeah. we... Yeah, well, how long, yeah, how long can you, I'll tell you what, can you, can you do like, your, your poems are what, like three minutes each? Something like that. Mm, yeah, probably something like yeah. that. Okay. Well, if you want, you can go ahead and read three, and then we'll go into some music. We we'll go three in a row. All right. Always do everything in three. So that sound good. That sounds like a plan. All right. Awesome. Okay. We ready for All right. You? All right. Let's see. You need some music. Let's see. If we got something good for you. Here we go. Oh, we, you always play. We always play. That didn't load anything new. Uh oh. Well, go ahead. Go ahead and do your thing. <laughs> You ready for me? Okay. Yeah, we ready. All right. Well, I am going to, um, I'll read the first one out of As It Flows From My Heart with Purpose, which is the final book in my series. And I'll read to you, release it. People, places, or things that hurt us make us angry. If we think about the offense too long, the hurtful thoughts churn into angry thoughts. Be honest about it. Ignoring isn't being honest. Ignoring squashes, so it's still present. Honesty releases an opportunity for forgiveness, resulting in freedom. Anger doesn't come with an expiration date. We have to give it one. Don't squash the offense. Release it. And I think, Jerry, a lot of my writings um, talk a lot about what's in our hearts Mm -hmm. and being honest with ourselves about ourselves. Um, I see a thread constantly about forgiveness. Yes. And I feel like it's so important to forgive just on a regular basis because if we don't, we end up, making decisions about our lives based on hurts, you know, and sometimes those mm-hmm. hurts can range from childhood, you know, to adulthood. Yes. And um, if we don't, if we're not honest with ourselves, sometimes we say that we forgive very quickly with our mouths. We'll say, you know, I forgave them a long time ago. But then when we're in the presence of that person, place, or thing, you know, we feel some kind of way, and I think it's important for us to pay attention to how we feel, mm-hmm. because like you, you were talking earlier about our bodies letting us know, telling us things, yes. and so even with, you know, our feelings or our emotions, it'll let us know whether or not we've let something go, so Amen. I think that that's what this particular reading is talking about. Yes. And releasing it and letting it go. Let it go. But we human. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one, I'll read another one called No One Knows. No one knows who you really are except the one who created you. Not made you, created you. God. 
those who made you parents don't know who they really are unless they consult the same source that created you. He, God, is the only one who knows who we really are and the specific purpose for which we were created. And when I think about this particular one, um, you know, no one knows. Mm -hmm. I think about my own life and the fact that, you know, for a long time we cannot really know who we are. You know, we have a lot of roles that we fulfill, you know, uh, maybe as parents or uh, spouses, children, um, you know, as, as friends or siblings. You know, we have a lot of different roles. Um, even our roles on the job, but I think that it really takes having a relationship with God and really studying his word Mm. to really get to know who you are. I know that's what it took for me, for me to really get to know who I was. I had to go to the scriptures, and I feel like I probably um, created my version of myself, But it wasn't until I really got serious about delving into the scriptures that I recognized and got to know who God created me to be. Mm -hmm. Amen. Powerful. And see, another one. It's your turn. When you have taken care of others better than you've taken care of yourself and your hair is gray, it's your turn. You've done your share of fixing, teaching, and training. It's your turn now. You've prayed wisdom for salvation and deliverance for all. It's your turn now. You've shared all that you have in time, talent, and treasures. It's your turn now. Trust God with the rest. Accept, embrace, and enjoy. It's mm. your turn now. Wow, it is. In that particular one, Jerry, I would like to dedicate to those people who um, really have dedicated their lives to the people in their life. Mm-hmm. And they've dedicated their lives to taking care of others. Um, and they have put others before them. And so this is, I believe, a message, you know, from God saying that, you know, it is your turn. At some point in time, it's okay Mm -hmm. for it to be your turn. And that, too, there's only so much that we can really do. And once we've done all that we know how to do in, in, in our own situations and in the situations of, you know, those around us, at some point in time, when we've done all that we know to do and we've laid it on the altar, you know, it's time for us to exhale right. and trust God and know without a doubt that he will handle whatever the situation is. Yes, yes. But like I said before, we, we human. <laughs> Some people just been <laughs> beat up so bad that, uh, whoo, man, mm-hmm. I hear some stories. I hear some stories, but you and I had a great conversation on on Friday about you know the history of the Bible and you know some some stuff that I, I never knew because you know it's, it's never been discussed. I mean, I remember um, I was going to this church, my wife and I, and I say this this guy, this pastor, he he may have been one of the mo- he was one of the most intelligent men I think I've ever met. That that was really, I mean, he knew that Bible well. I mean, he knew this thing. He, he he was a really he was a teacher. He actually taught. Um, I think he taught Genesis at a Bible college, so he was very familiar with the Bible. And okay. Um, but the only thing with me, always like, and I, I don't know if it's my fault or not. I guess being an inventor, I just love to know the origin of things. <laughs> You know, because they never okay. get you in trouble when you know the origin. Because I remember growing up when people were buying, um, like, you know, some of these name brand products. And they said, oh, they, did you know that product is owned by the people who financed the Civil War or 
you know, blah, 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 right. blah. He's like, you know, but yet, mm-hmm. like, baby was wearing it because it was expensive and it looked good and it made you feel special. Right. You know, but they didn't know the origin of it. You know, like, right. I always wanted right. to know what, what is a, what is a North, what's that thing called? North, um, what is that shirt everybody, that jack, those coats everybody wear? Uh, not South, oh. North something. Yeah. I'll find it in a minute. But anyway, yeah, I, can't I wanted to know. Let me see. I'm gonna Google it real quick. I got it right here. I, 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 want, I want to make sure I know North Face. North Face. Okay. I wanted to know what is a North Face. <laughs> you know, like do right. people really know what they're wearing? I mean, I know you know stand right. is supposed to warm your body. You know, it's really lightweight, mm-hmm. and I really want to know. But it, but it was good news though about it though. I, I, I traced the origin. Okay, good. Thank you, DJ. But, <laughs> Quan found it for me. <laughs> I really wanted to know what was a North Face, cause like, but it, it it's a very it's interesting a story. Yeah, it's a very interesting story. If anybody want to look it up, very interesting story. Okay. Yeah, it was nothing bad. Um, the guy he was a good okay. guy. Yeah, the guy that was part of this company is a good guy. But anyway, that's just me. I just like to know the origin. So that's important. Hmm. Yeah, it was important to know that. It's important to know. Yeah. I believe. The yes. origin yes. of what you're supporting or spending your money on. That's right. I mean, I'm like that with people. Like, it's like if you're going to be my boss, for some reason, I still want to know, you know, where you come from. You know, what, you know, why did they choose you? You know, what is, what's your credentials? Mm-hmm. You know, what do you bring to the table that's going to make us better? Especially like as a new guy. Right. You know, most of the new guys will come and tell you any, tell you their story anyway. But if you walk into our existing uh, department, you know, it's, it's not lo- like it's not going to be a two way street, really. <laughs> you know, but I just, I just been that way for a really, really long time. You know, it was like, wow. Um, how did the automobile, how did the automobile really get started? You know, you know they always talk about Henry Ford, yeah. but but was Henry Ford really right. the the first creator of the of the four wheel vehicle or the vehicle? Pre- Probably was a brother. He got tired of pulling the cart. <laughs> he figured out a way <laughs> how to burn corn, <laughs> corn starch or whatever. I, I guarantee you. <laughs> but I think it's good to be and, and remember our conversation was was basically almost like the origin of the Bible. Like you know, it's like if you're gonna mm-hmm. follow these. These, these, the, these, this ordinance. Well, maybe not ordinance. If you're gonna follow these gods, these words, these principles, which is a covenant, this covenant, you you want to know. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, it, it came from God and was spoken to somebody, but who was that person, and why did they just choose those books and not the other books that's supposed to be out there? You know, those are the kind of questions. You know, and thanks to YouTube, the answers. My answers, my questions were answered. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a and whole And I think as we... I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was, I was just going to just finish up what I was saying, but it, was, it wasn't really nothing. But go ahead, what you were going to say. No, I was just going to say that, you know, the, I think the more we grow, um, the more we grow, the more we want to know. You know, and that's what it seems like, you know, with you too, the more you, the more, you, the more you grow, the more you're wanting to know, you know, about the origin. That's right. And, and I've always been like that. Oh, I just want to let everybody know that Cotton Campbell has joined us and she had a birthday last week. I hope she got our message. Happy belated, belated birthday. Cotton used to be a podcaster on our Friday night show before her job took over her life. <laughs> but she she still does radio though, but she's just not on on this okay. Christian network now. But hello, Cotton, and happy belated birthday to you! Thanks for joining us tonight. So anyway, well, you know, back to our conversation, and just like Amazon and all those companies, like who you know, and then one reason why I always been that way because um, I met Earl Graves, Earl D. Graves. You know, he's the founder, the publisher of Black Enterprise. And I just loved that magazine. Uh. I love that. I thought yeah. that magazine was going to ha- ha- help catapult. I mean, because there was some brilliant black people, and there was some some people had opportunity mm-hmm. I didn't even know existed for our people. You know, they own franchise and you know, mm-hmm. nice friend, nice businesses. Then they was in- inventing businesses and starting their own franchise opportunity, not just buying in one, but starting one, which I think is like the right. best thing ever. It's almost like being a distributor of other people's music. 
you know, you're not making the music, but you're making money off of other people's music. And I always remember Prince said, right. if you really want to make money in the music business, you need to be in the distribution business. And the same thing with, okay. um, you know, uh, Black um, Black Enterprise magazine. Um, it just was like a blueprint of, of what, because, I mean, even this guy, even he was probably, he, he had one of the most successful African-American magazines probably ever, right? Right. Right. That's a, that's a name I've ever seen in a long time. I remember. What's up, brother? Happy New Year. That's that's a businessman. Started a little icy stand. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing now, but it was, he had the best um, shave ice in, in the country. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was okay. driving my kids all the way a couple of miles to go get that. But anyway, he just came into the queue. I just want to holler at him. I haven't talked to him like in years. So anyway, um, I always felt like he was the blueprint of success. And, and you know, it was almost like reading Dennis Kimbrough's book, you know, Think and Grow Rich. You know, this guy went out there and interviewed, like, everybody that was African-American or whatever that was successful. He wanted to know what was the the blueprint to their success. What did they do differently? What what was separated them? Why? How did they become the five percenters? You know, or the ten percenters? Right, right. And they weren't athletes, too. They were, they were self-made millionaires. Most of them, wow. yeah. So it was it was incredible to read that book. That book just ignited me when I picked it. It was almost like picking up the Holy Bible, you know. And then wow. um, because it was his words, and, and it, you know, he wrote it. It wasn't like nobody else took went behind him and said, "Okay, I'm gonna take a couple of chapters and I'm gonna leave this chapter out and I'm gonna change this in the chapter." It was like his words throughout okay. the book. Okay. And same thing with Black Enterprise, you know, um, Earl. Graves, I mean, Earl Graves, Mr. Graves always started the book off with his, his commentary, which was always so deep. And one time he told a great story in his book, because he wrote a book called um, The White Guys Have All the Fun. And he had this one piece in there where, because I was in, you know, my family owned a newspaper at the time, and the deal was okay. like, how do you get major advertising. We, I mean, we was doing well with locals. You know, we was getting the nonprofits and small businesses and uh, everybody that was inside this flea market were buying ads. We had all the people that had, uh, you know, nonprofits and churches and small grocery stores. But we want to know, how do you get mm-hmm. the big ads like the car dealerships and, and, the, and the Kmarts and the Sears and J.C. Penney's right. that was in those areas? How, right. how do you get them? Of course, you know, you have to contact corporate. You know, could corporate make the decisions? And they want to see what you're right. dealing with. They're not going to just put mm-hmm. that thing in anybody's publication. So he ran into that same stumbling block. Interesting story. Mm-hmm. And, and his magazine was like covered all over the country. You could buy it in, in, in black populations in the UK and Germany. You know, that magazine was worldwide. Okay. Black Enterprise. Wow. And beautiful. I mean, perfect photographs. I mean, everything was just perfect about this thing. It was yeah, you know, beautiful magazine. Loved it. Yeah. But the deal was, he said that despite how success, su- successful he was with this publication, getting into print, wide distribution, he had problems securing large car car manufacturers. Now, he, he didn't go after dealerships. He went after the manufacturers like Mercedes-Benz. Oh. Yeah. And okay. the story was that his salespeople had problems securing a Mercedes-Benz North America ad. You know, they were in everyone else's magazine. Why not his? So he actually had to take right. a trip over to Germany to Mercedes-Benz North America to have a sit-down with this executives, you know, this decision makers wow. of Mercedes-Benz. Okay. And so when he got there, it was so crazy. He said, they told him, they said, the reason why they didn't advertise in this magazine was because they didn't mm-hmm. think that black people bought new Mercedes. They thought they just bought used oh, cars. Wow. They thought we just bought used ones. We didn't buy them brand new. He said, wait a minute. Wow. Whoa, really? So he had um, <laughs> he had bought a portfolio with him. And inside the portfolio were pictures of his friends that owned brand new Mercedes. Right. Wow. And they knew which one, you know, they knew they were the latest model, you know. Right. You know, they probably leased oh the cars, God. too. You know, that's when we were different familiar with leasing cars. But, you know, he couldn't believe that. And so after they saw that, and he and I mean, this is the president of Black Enterprise LTD had to get on a plane to go visit some exec. And just remember, these executives, they're not the owners of Mercedes, you know. Right. Del Marlboro. Because, you know, Mercedes got a couple names to it. It's just not Mercedes Benz. It's like, 
a uh, couple other names involved with that. But it, it, I was like, wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That is it. I know. I said, black people, we got, we got far. And that, when I read that story, that was 20 years ago. 20, no, 25 yeah. years ago, because it was the, it was a year before my wife and I got married. I was, yep. Because I remember when okay. I first discovered that magazine, I was at a friend's house because it was a bad snowstorm. And we was working at the same company. She said, um, look, um, I know, you know, you, you know, you don't drive in the snow and, you know, I was on midnight shift. She said, well, cause I get off like at seven or something like that. She said, if it gets, no, I got off like two, three in the morning. I had a real crazy shift. And oh, she wow. said, if it looked like you can't make it, you know, where you had to go. Cause I had to go out in the County and there was no train mm-hmm. running. She said, you know, you can stay at my place. She had this huge house and it was only like three, four okay. miles from the job. So that's okay. So I called her, made it around there. And she had stacks of Black Enterprise magazine in her guest room. And I stayed up most of the night okay. reading through that. I just was so f- I never. It was my first time seeing that magazine. And I was working for a, a publisher that, that printed magazines. like, But mostly it was like fitness magazines and, and stuff. Like okay. And medical okay. stuff. Because we specialize in medical science and um, some else journals. So anyway, that's my story about uh, Earl Graves and the, the I guess the, yeah. the journey that you know we entrepreneurs what we what we must do just to secure a sale you know mm-hmm. <laughs> just to secure that it was a powerful magazine i i remember it yes yes and it's still it's still out there in print i think people get it distributed to is it home. still in print yeah i think it's like small distribution probably got to get in the mail and I haven't gotten in a while because after after a while it was like it was you know I was starting to get really familiar with the stories and I think it's, some of it is online. But I was at a point where I kind of I need somebody to talk. You know, when the internet came along, remember the magazine is like talking at you, not really to you. You know, it's like it's, right. And sure. and, 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 and nowadays, by the time it go to print, the information is kind of dated. Even though some of the stories were bios. Uh, you know these people's right. origin, which a lot of times is like, yeah. okay, who made the B one hundred, B two hundred list of the multi million dollar black businesses? It was pretty much starting to be the same companies on there, and then some of the stories were, were starting to be more about money and finance and investing and stuff like that. College education. I was more yeah. interested in making it. That the story called right. making it. I love that. You know, people telling you how. They came from nothing, or this is how they started, right. and this is where they are today. But they still not where they want to be. You know, I just love mm-hmm. them stories. You know, we and we made that oh, part yeah. of a magazine That's that we great. published too. We we told that same story. So anyway, everybody. Okay. So anybody out there, you know, you 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 you're struggling with your business. You don't know which way to go, or it's growing, but it's not going at the pace you want it. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta go out there and do your research and find find someone who's doing what you're doing and see what they you know get in contact with the internet is, uh, allows that to happen you know you can That's true. you can email them say hey I'd like to talk to you if you have a few minutes you know I, I admire what you're doing I'm trying to do the same thing if you don't mind mm-hmm. I'm a student of the game man you know we gotta, we gotta That's right. yeah we gotta enjoy what we're doing you know so we can and do it right. You know, why reinvent the wheel? Somebody else already got it rolling. That's what I always say. Exactly. You can always make That's it right. Better. And a lot of people are willing to, you know, because they know what they had to go through to get to where they are. Yes. So a lot of people are willing to share they information, are. Are. you know, to help somebody else. That's right. Along, yeah. so. And there's some people out there, you yeah. know, especially in the film business, like, you know, I took a lot of coursework online. And and then, okay. you know, these guys were giving up some information like, whoa, they should be charging for this. But, you know, I was part of a program and these guys, I mean, Spike Lee actually had submitted um, a tutorial on how to, you know, okay. how to be successful in the film business. I mean, it was it was okay. it was incredible to people, um, people who had worked with Steven Spielberg. I mean, it was just so many big name directors uh-huh. and producers and got actors who are now directors. You know, it was incredible. Um, from from film to editing to sound to s- setup to I mean everything everything you needed to everything. know from A to Z was was in this curriculum you know it was incredible it took a long wow. time to finish though but it was worth it 
because <laughs> it was just, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was hungry. it I sounds was, like it. Yeah, I, I love it when people who have made it take the time mm-hmm. to, you know, put some information together or you know reach back. That's right to help somebody else. That's right, and we need that. That's pretty I mean, awesome. I mean, that's right. Yeah. So and if everybody people, did it, you know, that would help people to, will. you know, fulfill their purpose. That's right. And and make so. and, 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 and I know you and I had talked about this one particular character, which I won't mention on the air, but I thought that was incredible how he took an economy that had more than 50 percent unemployment and made and took it up to 100 percent. I was like, wow. You know, but of course, you know, yeah. his, his name, his name has been dog. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, right. you, you know, but 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 I thought yeah. the business side of him was was brilliant, you know, because the, the yeah. guys before him couldn't do it; they didn't know what to do, you know, so they bowed out. Right? Yeah. So and, and then, you have uh, some you know, people who are gifted like that. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, born leaders. It, it, yeah, exactly. Born leaders. Born so. leaders. But you also have people out there who help create leaders, you know, great mentors help create leaders, you know, right. they maybe never made it far themselves, but they discovered what, where they went wrong. Where did they go wrong? Right. You know, mm-hmm. and, they, and they able to guide you. I remember they used to have a organization called scores in the Baltimore, Maryland area. If you had a small business, they would line you up with a mentor and, you know, he was there okay. to uh, guide you with, you know, someone were accountants, lawyers, former CEOs of big mm-hmm. companies, and they were there to, to help keep you motivated and keep you, you know, moving okay. in the right direction. You know, make sure you become successful. I love that. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're still around, but they were retired executives, a lot of them. But I thought that was awesome. I know my uncle had belonged to uh, that group, and he had started a sign franchise where they specialize in corporate signs. So anybody who's putting okay. up a fancy okay. business building, he could mm-hmm. outfit every cubicle, door, you name it. He got that. That was a wow. great contract. <laughs> that was a great contract. Wow. Yep. Can you imagine what would happen with our young people if they um, all had access to a mentor? I know. You know, who was in a field that they were passionate about to kind of show them mm. the way and, and inspire them and, and like you said, even especially for the ones who, you know, started out and had a rocky start to mm-hmm. life, but yes. made it anyway. Yes. I think that would be powerful if, be. if all of our children had access to you know, a mentor, somebody that they could look at yeah. that made it and know, you know what, if he made it, you know, if she made it. Then, um, then I can make it. You I know? think. I think if they, you know, but, going back to Matthew seven seven, I think if they if they ask for it and seek it, and you knock on that door, I think the opportunity will present itself. Just like YouTube, you know, we talked true. about we talked about YouTube. YouTube is one huge archive, and right. you don't just have to wait till like a neighbor, I mean, uh, a athlete that, that made it from the hood come back and try to motivate you. But what are you going to motivate you in, to be a football player or a basketball player and you too short to shoot and too slow to run right. to carry a football? Right. You know, it was right. like, that's not going to help you. But if you get some guys that, who who was from that neighborhood and, and went off and became successful right. after graduating from college or starting a business from the ground up, they wouldn't make excellent role models. And I've seen fraternities – and sororities go back into those communities that offer, offer tutoring and all kinds of programs. Right. I'm sure um, that 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 guy is sharing some parts of his life with those kids. But but it's right. like um, I noticed most of those programs are for kids that are in the middle school age. I'm like, okay. you know, are they reaching? Because I was I was actually working in a high school a few years ago before I, I went into a leadership program with the federal government. And, um, okay. I, I, you know, it was an initiative on my own. I, what I did, I took some people that was working with me that were successful in business. They had, like, side businesses or was talented in certain things. And I was discovering some of them were actually were natural speakers, good speakers. And they had a great uh-huh. story to tell them that, you know, where they were 
in the, you know, from the hood and, and then getting a scholarship and then going to college and maybe messing up and starting over. You know, it was some great stories came out of that. And then what happened was I, when I went into the program and I went over to headquarters, um, I, I was in old communications and um, they, they did advocate work, but it was like a lot of legal stuff was involved. But then we later found out that, that the, the agency actually had already had a program in place called Adopt the School. So all we had to do was just get, and what I did, I went from asking, um, you know, your, your, your lower GS grades to be speakers to asking mm-hmm. executives. So we were actually taking executives over to the school as keynote speakers. And, and managers, okay. yeah, it was awesome. And the kids was like really blown away. And these were high school kids that have never heard story. Wow. Because just think about this. Most of those kids are only exposed to the teacher and the coaches and the principal. Right. The principal ain't going to sit mm-hmm. there and share his life story with no kids. No. Because you know, he, he, no. you know, he, he thinking that's going to show his weakness. And then the coach, right. most of the time... You know, he's 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 beat up so bad with these these sad stories, you know, trying to keep the kids on the team that you don't have a great mm-hmm. story. But, you know, but the grid on stories and maybe, the, the you know, basketball stories, you know, he show a couple of movies, you know, you got right. the kids there. But when you got somebody coming in from, you know, a normal life, you know, you know, like coming mm-hmm. in from government, state, local, whatever, you know. Not just mm-hmm. a police officer or a fireman, but someone is like, right. you know, I'm a manager, executive. This is what this is. The, this is the blueprint I use to get where I am today. And I'm telling you right now, I wasn't a great student, but I, ma- I made up my mind that I was going to be one in college. And then here I am today, mm-hmm. you know, leading 30, 40 wow. people, maybe a thousand. I think one lady that I had as a speaker, she she led, man, she had a bunch of people under her. Very humble woman. Very humble. Okay. So I, I really okay. felt really good about that, you know, giving them kids that opportunity. And some of the kids were, were in a program called Second Chance. Second Chance. Okay. They were out of school. They were over 18. And they and then what happened, the principal took a part of the building that really wasn't being used and turned into a learning lab. And he could house, oh, like, wow. anywhere between 25 to 30 kids. And they come in different times of the day. And then they go to work. Like they maybe start to shift early in the morning and they show up in the afternoon and they, and they had like uh, teachers from different subjects there to help them. And it was like a learning lab and they were, they were there wow, to prepare great. themselves, I think for the GED. Yep. So I had a chance okay. to uh, work with those kids for a little while and expose them. So it was awesome. You know, you had a chance to. And you never know how far reaching that, um, that was because, you know, it's not just the children that, that had that opportunity that it could have, you know, made a huge difference in the mm-hmm. direction that their lives went in. That's right. Um, but also for the generations coming after them, depending on what their choices were yes. and what, what they were inspired or motivated and to a do. Lot, a lot of them were parents. Yeah. A lot of those kids that sat in that room were parents. Not just with okay. one child, but maybe two. And and then not only that the, the the executives the managers and and some of the you know the lower GS grades told me that that did more for them than they believe what they did for those right. kids you know that, I bet. Was, that was really inspiring because some people felt like they were at a dead end they had no they couldn't reach no further they didn't know where they were gonna go but then after sitting there it kind of remind them that they were the, those kids just a few years ago you know right. Right. And that's, see, and I, I have a lot of respect for um, people who don't forget. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that, you know, sometimes you can be far removed from, you know, where you were or, you know, where where we were. Um, and not just in a, a physical sense, but even in, in our thinking process. Yes. You know, and sometimes... You know, as adults, we'll look at children, you know, a certain way or young people or what have you. And, you know, I mean, when we were young, we made some decisions that weren't the best decisions. We thought differently from the way we think now. Um, But I think it's really cool when you can, you know, go back, not forget, not forget what it was like to be a teenager, what it was like to, you know, um, 
be in grade school and how you felt or how other people made you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and in middle school, you know, it's like you're struggling because you're not a little child anymore, but you're not an adult either, and you're trying to figure out who you are. Um, and to have people to come back and, you know, especially at the, the high school um, age too, mm-hmm. to come in and, and, and motivate you and, and even say, you know, hey, you know, when I was your age, um, I had this, that, and the other going on. Mm-hmm. But you know what? It was the end of the world. That's right. And I pushed it and made it through. That's right. You know, so and just, just like, like I you. did it, you can do it too. That's right. So I was just like you, kid. <laughs> the, right. You yeah. Know, thinking like, yeah. you know, like baseball was going to carry me through life and not anticipating injuries and, you know, and that was like, a, it was, that was a, a similar story when we, cause we actually participated in their career day. And um, I mean, this okay. this was this career day thing was huge. What these guys were doing, it was huge. And yeah, a lot of people come from different um, areas of you know of the business, and um, this, these this, these people really put put their heart in this. And I was able to bring a lot of people in in, in from the business community, and mm-hmm. we grouped okay. this. They grouped us up, and it was like a workshops we had. And most of the presenters said they got more out of it than they think the kids did because they were able to hear the other stories of the other presenters, similar stories. Wow. You know? Like, uh, for example, uh, they be saying most black men always say, okay, you get that college degree. You could put that in your back pocket and you go try some other things, you know, sports, mm-hmm. maybe start your own business, uh, travel, whatever, you know, but you got that thing there right. just in case you need to pull it out. To get that interview because right. you need something to carry. You know, you, tr- you move to a new town. Plan A, mm-hmm. Plan B. So I remember this guy said, "Um, you know, why why you got to have a Plan A and a Plan B? Why can't school just be your Plan A? Because then the guy said, well, it's a thing called passion. You know, God has given you some kind of fire in you, and it's something that's going to make you excited. When somebody say that magic word, you're going to light up. Like, oh, that's my God, right. I, that's all I think about. And that's so, right. so that's really your plan A, but that may not be the plan that can start a family or buy a home and buy your dream car mm-hmm. and give, you know give you travel money. But but you know, mm-hmm. but it could be a hobby and it could it could bring you joy, you know. So you may have to that's right. you know get that that job just to support you in your family, right? Until you know plan B. You know, that's the passion. That's right. But if it's sports, it may, it may be a little too late. But, you know, I always say, you know, just like musicians, look at all these people we entertain on the show that are musicians that couldn't make it, you know, um, full time right. because, you know, it's right. tough out there. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's planned. And they didn't make it so they had to do other things like teach school, um, right. construction, you know. And now... Mm-hmm. With the internet being the way it is, they can they can enjoy it a little more now because because now they got an opportunity to have their music heard. They don't have to be, you know, right playing in nightclubs. That's right. Thing, you know, You're right. <laughs> yeah, and even though, and even though they have to do other things, you know, um, from a financial standpoint, they haven't given up on their passion. Right. You know. That's right. Sometimes you put it away yeah. a little bit. You know, for a rainy day, but it's like you still enjoy. That's just the one thing to give you peace. You know, right? That's right. Got to have peace. That's right. You know? Like, like for example, um, let's talk a little bit about you know your passion, being a poet. I mean, you meet a lot of these people. Oh yeah, I write poetry. So tell us your origin. You know, how did that get started? And we know where you are now, which is in a good position. But how did that get started? Well, that's a good question, um, Jerry, because I didn't, um, you know, like there are people who have already always known what they wanted to do from the time they were young. Some Mm -hmm. people already know what it is that they were supposed to be doing. And that wasn't me. I didn't know what it was. I knew there was something from the time I was in middle school. I would ask the question, you know, you know, why am I here? You know, what is my purpose? I can remember always wondering, why am I here? Mm -hmm. You know, like there was something, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. And I would write um, poetry. I remember the night my father passed, I wrote a poem 
And um, one of my aunts, she read it, and she said, you know, that's a beautiful poem, um, but you should also write when you're happy, because at that point I realized that, you know, I pretty much wrote poetry when I was sad. Mm. And so anyway, um, from that point I would, I would write from um, time to time, and I, throughout the years, as I went through different things in my life, what I call the what in the world moments, Mm -hmm. you know, the people would say to me, you know, you really should write a book. And at one point I even tried, but it just didn't flow. I mean, many years ago. And then in 2012, um, I, after, you know, uh, going through divorce and, um, you know, at that point I had one daughter who was in college and I had two teenage sons and, um, it was it was a difficult time for us, and I found myself um, whenever I had any you know downtime. Um, well, I didn't even realize it, but apparently I would write. And so one day, I started going through these different tablets that I had, and realized that I had a lot of these writings. Wow. And so I started counting them up and putting them together, tearing them out of the different tablets and putting them together, and and mentioned to my aunt one day that, you know, I said, you know, I have all these writings. I didn't even realize I had written so many. And at that point, it was um, 50-some of them, which all of those are in the first um, book. And so she said, well, you know, share them with me. And she's in Florida. um, And uh, so I would read some of them over the phone to her. Hmm. And so she said, you know, you really do have to share these with people. People could be blessed by by these. But I'm a very quiet person. And the fact that I'm even, you know, on the radio with you, for some people who have known me, you know, would be in shock (laughs) because I'm just a behind-the-scenes person. You know, I always have been. And so I just, you know, when when she was saying you should publish, I did not see that happening at all because I I knew I didn't want to be a public person. And so, um, and I didn't have the confidence. I didn't think that my writings were something that I felt like they were something that God had given me. And I wrote them just like they were. I never edit them. Um, And I just figured that they were messages, you know, um, for me. I never thought that it was anything that I was to share. But, um, But she continued to say, you know, people, I remember one day she said she knew somebody who was going through cancer and she said she needs this. She Mm -hmm. needs to, you know, and so at that point I started taking it seriously and I went to my first lady and um, after I had typed it all up and so I asked her if she would read it and let me know her thoughts Mm -hmm. and so she did And she said to me after she read it, she said two things that really um, brought tears to my eyes. The first thing was she called me a poet. Wow. And nobody had ever called me a poet. I didn't think of myself as a poet. Um, And I was like, wow. And then the next thing she said, uh, which really um, blew me away, she said, um, because Maya Angelou was going to be speaking at one of the colleges here, Mm-hmm. And she said, you should be the opening act for Maya Angelou. Wow. And I, um, I, I, at that point, I was just so humbled for her to even, two things, call yeah. me a poet and to even, you know, suggest that I should even open for Maya Angelou. Yeah. So then I decided mm-hmm. that she was just being nice. <laughs> you know, I said, oh, she's just being nice. <laughs> To me, so the following, I don't know if it was a Sunday or Wednesday when I saw her at church, she came up to me. It was almost like she read my mind. And she said, I know you think I was being nice the other day, but I was serious. Wow. And I was like, wow. Mm. So, and at that point, I think that is when I became serious and knew that I had to publish these writings and that it wasn't about me and whether or not I wanted to be public or not, that it wasn't about that. It was about the fact that I had made myself available to God and I had, you know, 
said, whatever it is that you would have me to do, wherever you would have me to go, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And so I know that, and, and I encourage people, even through my writings, that no matter what you're going through, and I can say that because I know the stuff I was going through while I was writing, while I was publishing, and if the enemy had had his way, I would have been distracted to the point where I never would have finished, I never would have published, but I was determined that no matter what was going on in the natural, I was going to complete this assignment. That's right before I left this place. So, and that's what I want to encourage other people, you know, to do when you know that God has put something in your heart to do, don't give up until you get it done. That's right. That's right. The fire is there. You know, you just gotta, yes. Yeah. Listen to them. Take some time out. I mean, they really, right. I know right now they are really, Hey, Mr. Tyler, Vincent Tyler just dialed in going on brother. <laughs> the man there. Can't wait to see him and his family this summer. That's right. They they know how to throw a barbecue. Um, <laughs> hope that's not the week be going away. But I think he did say it's gonna be in August. That'd be cool. So um okay um your, your story like so many people, it's that it always take one person to you know light that fuse to to get you going. You know because sometimes you always right. doubting yourself. You know it's like ah. Nobody's going to be interested. Yep. Nobody want to hear me. Or nobody want to read my music or see my music or this, see me, see my video. You know, it's like, just do it anyway. Who cares? Just, do, right. it. just do it for yourself. Just that's see if right. you could just do it to see if you could do it. You know? You're right. That's, that's, that's what true. always got me going. It's just, I just want to see if I could do it. When, when I first published that, when my, my dad, my mom invested all that money to print my brother and our first newspaper. We just want to see if we could do that's it. Right. You know? Okay. That's awesome. I know. It was like, yeah. and they were so proud. It was like, wow. Our first yeah. newspaper, you know. Yeah, that was... and that's it. You know, being willing to, you know, being willing to to just to, to go for what's in your heart. Um, and it's a good feeling. You know, I, I was ridiculously shy as a child. I mean, ridiculous. I didn't even want people to see me. You know, now I've, I've, I've written something called, um, and one in the first book, there's something called, um, you see me. Mm -hmm. And like, we were talking about the young people, you know, and sometimes we, can I share that one with you, Jerry? Yeah. You have time? Yeah, go ahead. Help so this say. one was in the first book as it flows from my heart and it's called, you see me, you see me. I used to be you. Why don't you say anything? You know my hurt, pain, my struggle. You see me. I used to be you. Why do you act like you can't see what's in my face, feel what's in my spirit? You see me. I used to be you. You know why I dress the way I do, speak, walk, and behave this way? Because you see me and because I used to be you? Why do you ignore me? Pass me by as if you don't know. Why won't you help me? Because you see me and because I used to be you and because you know, please don't act like you don't know. What if you're the one God sent to help me? See me. I see you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think about our young people sometimes who, you know, are going through things, um, and as a behaviorist, I was trained to look at not the behavior that the person is emitting, mm -hmm. but to, like you talked about, with getting to the origin. You know, I was trained to, to, to figure out why. Why are they behaving that way? Mm -hmm. And I see now when I go back and I look at, you know, the, the training that I got and how God is using it in these writings. Because as a behaviorist, I had to pay attention to detail. Yes. Yes. And had to pay attention to, you know, emotions, the detail of emotions. And, and and I think he had me to get that training because I didn't know, but he knew mm -hmm. he would use it right. in these writings. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, another person that's, to me that's, that's, that's very fascinating, and it's because she's in everybody's household and everybody listens to her every word, 
And she doesn't really come off that super intelligent either. It's just she just acts like she's just so concerned about people's welfare. And that's Oprah Winfrey. You know, I remember she was in Baltimore. She oh, was the yeah. same way. Yeah. Just seemed like yeah, she didn't come off like she wanted to be anybody's mother, but she just had right. that something about her like she really cared, like she's really listening to you and she's mm-hmm. gonna find an answer, you know, in her show. Right. You know. She wanna make everybody happy. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and and I've, I've been catching some great shows. She has some really good podcasts. Anybody looking for, you know, some some awesome podcasts? And her podcasts are long too, long like us, <laughs> like two hours. Okay. She breaks them. I think she actually breaks them down at, you know, the segments. I think she go like three hours, man. If I was stopping, with one guess. But they, 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 these are fascinating. These are people who she want to know what makes them tick. You know how people used to always say, I want to know what make you tick. And that's her. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so and she want to know, you know, no matter how spooky, how weird it is, she want to know where mm-hmm. did you get that from? <laughs> right, that's true. <laughs> that's that's true. Her. Yeah. And I'm following her right and now. genuinely. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going to say she just seems um, just genuinely concerned about people i've heard interviews and i've heard people say that about her that she just she just seems to genuinely care yeah (laughs) um about people that's how my mom was too she was genuinely concerned about everybody Mm, that's a wonderful genuinely way to be um and she and, and see oprah has this magic about her that she can just bring out anything in somebody no matter how secret Secret to right. you gonna tell it. She have you That's just right. like she had Tom Cruise bouncing around on that couch. <laughs> she gonna she gonna she gonna make you do something. You gonna do a pony show for her. That's you know. right. She gonna get That's you all right. comfortable. You gonna fit a, forget about the cameras and and she gonna give right. you that look and like okay. So tell me the real yeah. deal. You know without mm-hmm. saying it. That's true. She yeah. has that effect. Yes, yes, and not not too many people have that magical quality, but she no. can do it. She just, mm. yeah, study she's something her. Something special. Yes, she's something yes. special. Yeah, she she's something special. There's a couple of them out there that's good at what they do. You know, they out there, y'all. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I check them out. That's too. right. I want to find. Angels um, I wish I could find a piece. As a matter of fact, tomorrow I want to see if I could find Earl Graves. Anything on him because I've met him twice here at. Um, he, he he was a presenter, or, I mean, a keynote speaker at Morgan State because he, he put a lot of money to Morgan's business school. They actually named it after him, and he's actually brought a lot okay. of money to that school. They engineering. They had, like, one of the best engineering programs in this country. A lot of people don't know that, but they get a lot of people from the okay. U.K. and Africa to come here and study math and engineering. Because my son oh, actually yeah. started off in engineering, but then he found out his true love was um, this telecommunication. You know, dealing with all this stuff. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna look for him. I'm gonna see if I can find something on him. I, that guy. I mean, he's much older now because I think when I met him, he was in the '60s. His son has taken over the company. Um, now. Oh, okay. And he's a pretty smart okay. kid too. Smart guy. Real smart guy. All right. Well, look, Verona. We've been talking to people all night long. I didn't get a chance to play my music review. We did have an opportunity to play some of the people we heard last week. And I did want to hear this piece from Shalon. So if everybody can hang tight, we're going to play her song. She actually, we have three songs from Ngara, but we're going to play two of them. And then we come back. Can you, can you pray us out? Yes. All right, cool. And and before I play these, these, it's going to be two in a row, y'all, not three in a row. But I want to thank Verona, you know, for coming back on the show again. We all miss her and happy new year. And, and I'm glad you, you know, you're back with us, and we enjoy your reading all the time. We can't wait to drop that LP. It's gonna happen, y'all. Keep us in prayer. All right. Thank We're you. We're close now. All right, here we go. This is Shalon, and this is called "Let Me Be." Why is he in the background? Why do we 
do this to ourselves? Why do we play around? See, I don't have time, time to fool around. Cause he's coming back, yeah, he's coming down. Live Worldwide Podcast. God has given you the tools to succeed. Why are you afraid to use them? Constantly comparing your gift to someone else You'll miss out on your blessing Oh, you say you're not good enough Who told you you're not good enough? You are beautifully and wonderfully made Don't miss out on your blessing Sound 
Listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Wow. All I can say is wow. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. You like that, Verona? You like that? Yes. That was beautiful. Beautiful, boy. That was beautiful. They mastered that thing with some incredible equipment. I can hear that quality. Woo, man. Yeah, it was powerful. Her. Yeah, I got to get her on the show, too. Wow. And that was Shalon. Shalon. Hmm. I had a feeling her voice was going to be like that when I saw her page. I don't know. I had a feeling about it. I said, hmm. I actually have three songs. One was actually featuring a couple other artists. I haven't heard a chance to hear that one yet, but I'm going to listen to that one. Maybe I'll play that when we end the show. Well, it's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen, featuring Verona. Jacob, she was here tonight, share her poetry, her wisdom, and the direction she's God has her going in, and the partnership. It's going to be awesome. 2017, y'all, double XI. All right, Verona, yes, you ready to give us your final thoughts and, your, and pray us out tonight? Yes. I want to say thank you so much, Jerry. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, well, and I am just so humbled by your support and so grateful for it. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say to all the people who are listening to just continue to believe, continue to trust no matter what you see going on around you. Trust God. Mm-hmm. Amen. Awesome. All right. Ready for me to pray? Yes, we ready. Okay. Heavenly Father, we come before you so grateful to you for life, for health, for strength. We thank you for everything, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our friends. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the Jerry Boys worldwide family. I thank you, dear God, just for the opportunity to represent you. I thank you for Jerry and all connected to him. I thank you for all those who are listening And our prayer request for them, Father God, is that you will open up the window and pour out the blessings until they don't have room to receive. I pray that you will go with all those who are in need and that you will meet each and every person at their point of need. These and all things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Co-hosting tonight. Actually, it was co-star. Um... I know, but I had talked to Patrice early in the week and uh, the weekend, and she, I think she took a little L, so um, she probably getting okay. some rest right now. So I'll try to catch up with her. But uh, my question, the last question for tonight is: Did you feel the power, of Verona Jacobs? Did you feel the power? I felt the power, Jerry. You felt the power. All right, everybody, we appreciate you guys stopping by. I know our show runs late. If you can catch the replay, that's right, we run on the on the Randall Kane Kingdom Network out there in California, so that show is probably just starting up now. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for that, brother. And also, remember, y'all, you can catch us on replays on iTunes, so get that podcast app. Also, we run this replay on Facebook. That's right, you catch it on Facebook, the replay. Listen to us while you're at work. Riding it out at the salty mines. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Positive Power 21. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. This is Brandon Royce, and you're listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide on Positive Power 21. Hi, this is Angel Sessions. When I'm in town, I listen to Jerry Royce Live Positive Power.
power21.org where they play my favorite music. Friday evenings for The Quiet Storm with Jerry Royce Live and yours truly with your top 10 video picks of the week. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Positive power. Double XI. Radio Facebook TV and Speaker Radio. Radio. Don't forget, y'all, the VIP exclusive radio club is open for those who are looking for radio play. Now, you hear that beautiful music, that super high quality. Man, Shalon, she tore it up. Ooh, that's what we're expecting to hear, y'all. That's how good God is. That's right. We give him all the praise. Right. So don't forget, y'all, we'll be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow night with Kimmy Kim. Lord, I give you Verona, Tina, Patrice, Kimmy, Paula, and Joyce. As your prayer for Tina, mom, who's still in the hospital, and her daughter. We thank you for them all. We thank you for everything they are and for all their gifts and talents. I thank you for the many things they have given to others and for all the kindness they have shown me. Lord, at the beginning of time, you put life into your creation. May you breathe life into us now so that each step we take is filled with your faith. Each thought we think is filled with your hope. Each moment we live is filled with your love. May we fully know your life and fully live in your love this day and every day. Amen. Again, thank you everybody for tuning in. He shared his files. Jay was live worldwide and out of the power.
to say I'm making better things And that will never change I'm not free for a change Nothing to clean, nothing strange My eyes are saying I'm making better things And that will never change And I might be free for a change
Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm here to remind you, do not put limits on God. He's truly able to make a way out of no way. Listen to this. We all have problems. We all have pain. Sometimes you may feel like you are going insane. Everything you go through, there's a reason why you got go through. God has a purpose. He has plans for you and me. He'll make a way out. No way. God makes a way. He'll make a way out. No way. God makes a way out of no way. No, it's not always so easy to say. I'm waiting on God. I'm living by faith. They seem like you're downright crazy, but no matter what people say, continue to wait on the Lord. Da, 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 da. Ever thought things were bad, uh-huh. and then they got a lot oh, worse. Yes, yeah. it did. Those are the times you gotta look up and start trusting Him more. Yeah, yeah. Cause everything you go through, there's a reason why you gotta go through. Yes, it is. God has a purpose. He got plans for you and me. So he'll make a way out. No way. Superwoman Tina Hobson, and you are listening to Late Night with Jerry Royce Live. When I teach, I go all the way. When I preach, I go all the way. When I pray, I go all the way. When I stand, I go all the way. All the way. I go all the way. I go all the way. I go all the way. Step 
open, ain't no fear and ain't no front. I go all the way in, cause I know I'm gonna win. Call it cocky, but I'm confident in who my faith is in. Jesus went hard for me, so I go hard for him. Ain't got no time for shaky hearts and minds out on the limb. Cause I stay rooted, I stay grounded, I stay pounding, I stay grinding, I stay rhyming, I stay praying, I stay shining. Radical is what they call me. Jesus, he died for me, can't beat that with a baseball bat. So call me crazy when I do the most. I bet you do the same if you get touched by that Holy Ghost. When I teach, I go all the way. When I preach, I go all the way. When I pray, I go all the way. When I stand, I go all the way. All the way. In my grave, young, fresh, and still say, Never scared, I'm so prepared. The devil thinks he's winning here. My squad may hear that salute. We go hard and speak the truth. I'm never tripping when we go hard. Got a little chance if you think that we don't know God. All the way in, like I'm playing with the big cars. Better step back, cause I'm shooting like a point guard. Running this race like a music. But the thing of death, you really know pain. Straight, never, never get shit in my mainframe. Hope it's seeing, bro. Better catch the next train. I'm going all the way in. And they D E on my tags because I'm fearless, bro. I just think they running. It, but they ain't heard about us though Damn, you better come correct Cause God don't like that disrespect Imagine standing at the gates And Jesus hits you with reject ah. When I teach, I go all the way When I preach, I go all the way When I pray, I go all the way When I stand, I go all the way All the way yeah. I go all the way yeah. I go all the way yeah. I go all the way yeah. Try to block my blessings, you gon' run into a rock. God gave me strength, God gave me muscle. Try to test me, boy, you will get hustled. I'm putting all my faith in God, better know my trust him. Oh yeah, I'm coming full force, get ready to tussle. I'm so insane, it plans out, making sure I bust him. I'm going all in, chosen, what? get him. With us combined, hey. that's a bullet two punchline. For Christ, I go all the way in, boy. Yeah. See the circumstances, adjective potential, so antsy. I'm killing you, angry spirits off. Call me Charles Man. So tell me what it be like. Yeah. You say you say, but you yeah. won't show no light. Yeah. You say you're armed up, but yeah. you will not fight. Yeah. You just hype home, yeah. with no fight. Elder Jones, this is all I know. This is all I know. Oh. You either go all the way in or let it all go. All go. They throw and shade at us like we playing God's ball. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Respect the movement, or you just might lose it. Stepping on us is like stepping on the pool pit. Or like bringing a knife to a gunfight with a full clip. The Bible is my pistol, and the word is these hollow tips. When I teach, I go all the way. When I preach, I go all the way. When I pray, I go all the way. When I stand, I go all the way, all the way, yeah. I go all the way. Yeah.